I'll spec this sweater here um, just to show you sort of how it happens uh, in actuality. So over here I have my uh, laptop with my spec sheet on it and we're going to go ahead and just fill in the title content. So let's just take a look at the laptop for a minute. Um, we see that? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the date. It is the 6th. And it's a little purple sweater, so I'm going to say it's fall. Let's give it a fall 2021. Uh, style number, of course, we're just going to make up whatever style number uh, is for that. I'm going to bring this down a little bit so we can get a little closer to the screen. And so, one, two, three, four. And fiber content that I'm going to go ahead and actually look at it. So we're going to look at the tag. Now all garments should have the fiber content listed. So we have 100% uh, cashmere. So I'm going to put that in there. And fabric type is uh, brushed knit. So how do I know it's brushed? Well, I don't know if you can see on here, but uh, it's nice and fuzzy. And typically when we get that fuzziness, um, it's because it's been brushed out. So the fabric's been knit or woven or whatever else you can brush, any kind of fabric. And um, it will bring up this sort of fuzzy halo. It will obscure the sort of knit stitch or weave. Um, but it has this lovely sort of soft appearance. So brushed, knit. Uh, I haven't weighed it, but I'm going to just estimate the yardage of being about one yard. And it doesn't have any trim, it's all knit in. Um, so, nope. Uh, no buttons. So, no buttons. Other, none, none, no, no, no. Garment description. Purple. Knit. Turtleneck. Okay, so that does the, uh, that goes for our basic information. Now we're about to go ahead and fill out our measurements. So again, our measurement guide is up. Uh, this fillable spreadsheet PDF is on Blackboard as well as our measurement descriptions. So let's get going. The first thing that we want to do is I want to lay out my uh, garment properly. So I want to do it as neatly and as flatly as possible. So I'm going to sort of, you know, not stretching too much, but flatten it out so there's no wrinkles, sort of nice and smooth. It looks like my sleeves are going to get off frame, but what are you going to do? I'll push them in for the just the camera angle for the sleeve shot. Sorry, that fish tank's going crazy. can, smoothing it out as is. And actually the way we would do this
this in the industry is we flatten it out on a steam table. So because knits are so stretchy and pliable, we don't use normal irons, but we use what's called a steam table. And um, it's an entire table that will lay it out and steam will kind of come through and up and relax everything. Now, I don't have a steam table here, so I'm just gonna have to try to smooth it out the best as possible. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my full length measurement. And um, I also want to double check now that I did all that smoothing, uh, what my size that I'm using is, so I'm putting it in the right place. Now I'm doing a size medium, so I'm going to be filling in a medium slot. Again, if you guys have a size that's not listed, just put it wherever and in the comments, just make note that it was a different size. If it was, you know, I had a small, medium, large, so if it was extra small or extra large or a numbered size or something like that. Okay, let's get that flattened out again. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take my full length. My full length is my high point shoulder to my sweep. So high point shoulder is right here, this one's side neck. And I'm going to measure straight down to my sweep. And you see there that's about 18 inches. So I'm going to fill that in right there, 18 inches. Next I have my center front length. And that is from my center front neck down, and that is since this doesn't have a you know has a big collar, it's going to be from that seam where the collar meets, okay? And I'm going to measure it straight down, and that is 17 and a half inches. Now I'm going to do my center back length. Now at this point, since I can't see through, I'm going to do my back measurements next. So I'm going to do all my front measurements and then flip it over for my back measurements. So I'm going to go to my front neck drop. And what I can do, now I can already sort of mathematically determine what my front neck drop is by the difference between my full length and the center front length. It's going to be a half an inch. But just to show you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a guideline right where that center front neck is, and then I'm going to measure down from my high point shoulder to that guideline. And it's about half an inch, which makes sense because, again, that's the difference between our full length and center front length. So front neck drop, and I'm going to wait to do the back neck drop. Now I'm going to do my neck width. The neck width is high point shoulder to high point shoulder. So high point shoulder right here, to high point shoulder. I'm going to smooth that out. Now I'm going to stretch it. I don't want to stretch width. I just want to cut a flat, relax width. And I have about seven inches right there from high point shoulder to high point shoulder. So seven inch neck width. Then I need my shoulder width, and that is the shoulder seam. So I'm gonna look where my armhole seam starts. I'm gonna measure along that shoulder seam from low point shoulder to high point shoulder. And those are about three and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to measure my shoulder drop. So I'm going to use another guideline. I'm going to put my guideline right there at the high point shoulder, having this come straight and then this straight across here. So we get that nice sort of squared off uh, horizontal line. And I'm going to measure from that line down to my low point shoulder. And my low point shoulder looks like has a drop of about one inch. So one inch. Now we're going to do our cross so, 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 ah, sorry, cross shoulder, uh, which is low point shoulder to low point shoulder. So I'm going to measure from low point shoulder to low point shoulder. Again, I'm going to see exactly where those armhole seams are and match up the point where the armhole seam matches up uh, with the shoulder seam. That's our low point shoulder. And it looks like right there. So my cross shoulder is going to be about 11 and a half. Now we have the across 
across chest, and that's taken from midpoint in the armhole. So I'm going to measure sort of my straight armhole, which is going to be a measurement later, and sort of on the midway point. So it'll be about right here. I'm just going to measure straight across the garment. And it looks like it's going to be about um, 12 and 3 quarters. And the next couple ones I have across back. Let's do across bust to finish up our front measurements. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that armpit, okay? And I'm going to measure straight down two inches, just like right there, okay? So I'm going to actually put a little bit of a guide for me. Let's say right over here. So I'm going to just line that up. And what I want to do is I want to find that two inches, and from there I'm going to measure across my bust. So there's the two inches. Strikes right there. I'm going to do that side seam to side seam. And the bust looks like it's about. Oh, Let's call that, um, let's call that 15 inches. Now I'm going to do my waist, which um, is about 9 inches down. So again, this is fairly short, so my waist is going to be pretty small here, so, or close to the end. So I have my 9 inches right there, and I'm going to measure across. And that's going to be... Looks like about 14 and 3 quarters. Now you might say, oh my goodness, Kate, why is the waist so close to the bust? Now this is because it's a knit, and this really highlights um, the difference in the construction of knit than of wovens. So yes, um, you know, when I put this on, or my body, uh, I don't have a quarter of an inch difference between my bust and my waist, thank goodness. But um, this garment, since it's knit, will stretch, and we um, assume that it's going to do that. So we get most of the shape and the fit and the difference between our measurements um, when this garment actually gets put on and is stretched out uh, uh, due to the stretchy nature of the fabric. Now, um, this is about as far as I go. I don't have a high hip or a hip because that's measures down and we were not quite getting there. So I don't have to put in those measurements. So if your stops at the waist or even is, is crop top, um, you don't have to do that. However, if it continues to go down, you will have to do those measurements. So I'm going to um, skip my high hip measurement um, and go straight down to the sweep. The sweep is of course the bottom opening. So I'm going to smooth out my bottom opening from side, to side seam to side seam. And that looks like it's about 15 and a quarter. And that will tend to sort of flare out over time too. This is an older sweater. Um, I could have probably imagined seeing that, you know, when this was new and, and um, a little bit closer measurements, hasn't gotten warped by wearing, being a little bit closer to the waist, but I put it on, I take it off, it get, this little bit gets stretched every single time. So that's probably why it's a little bit bigger right now. Okay, now I got some armhole measurements. So I'm going to kind of adjust this in frame. So we can take a look at our armhole, smooth out the armhole, flatten it out, and uh, we've got two armhole measurements. The first is a straight measurement, so I'm going to take a measurement straight from my low point shoulder up here, straight down to my armpit, so where that armhole seam meets my side seam. And we've got about six and three quarters as our straight measurement. And then we have a curve measurement. So then instead of doing it straight, I want to basically take that same measurement from high point shoulder to low point shoulder and curve along the armhole seam. So this is just the whole length of the seam right here. 
and it should be a little bit more than it is. It's about seven inches right there. <clears throat> now we got to do our sleeve uh, measurements. So I'm going to sort of shift this over so we can get the whole sleeve and frame. Smooth it out. We in frame, we are good. So the first one is our overarm, which is high point shoulder up here. I'm sorry, low point shoulder up here. All the way down to the opening. Okay? And that is uh, 20.5 inches. Then we have um, our low point shoulder. I'm sorry, our underarm, which is armpit to end. That is about 16 and a quarter. We have our bicep measurement. So what I want to do here is I want to measure out two inches from that armpit. So it's about two inches. I'm going to measure it two inches down and across perpendicularly across the sleeve at that two inch mark. And we have about, what's that called, a four and a half. And our sleeve opening, which is a teeny tiny two and a half inches. Next we have collar height. So I'm going to put this back into frame, smooth it out. Now, I have a bunch of rib um, finishing on my edges, on my cuffs, on my sweep, and of course this collar, is, the turtleneck part, is ribbed as well. Um, and I'll probably mention that in the comments. So um, before, actually let me just go back a step a minute. So um, here's an interesting uh, or important factor. So, if you take a real good look at this sleeve here, it's hard for me to notice, but it's not stitched in. What happens is we create this fabric, we stitch it ribbed, and then we blend it into the normal knit stitch. So this isn't a trim, it's not sewn on, it's actually part of the sleeve, and it's actually just knit this way. And that's why when I took the measurements for this sleeve, I included the whole thing. Now I'll probably mention in sort of the comments that it has this cuff here, um, uh, or this amount of rib trim. Um, but I'm not, if it was an actual cuff that was actually sewn on, my sleeve length would end at that uh, seam right there, at the seam for the cuff. But since there is no seam, we did it all the way to the end. Now, for here, that's not true. This is seamed in. And um, so that is going to be our collar. The collar can refer to sort of other trims, smaller trims as well. So if you just have like a, a smaller one inch trim, we could put that there as well. Hi, Rin. So what I'm going to do is, um, for turtlenecks and most collars, it should be um, only, uh, it should be a, a, a constant height. So even though it looks like maybe it's a little bit um, longer here or shorter here, it's actually not. It's all going to be one size. So I'm going to measure from that center front, really wherever you want, just straight up along there. And I see the height of my collar is about seven inches. And I am going to mention the cuff and sweep trim height, just the amount that is ribbed. So I'm going to measure from the rib part here. And that is three and a half inches. And the sweep trim height as well. three inches. Okay, so I'm going to flip it to the back and do a couple of my back measurements, which, you know, on a knit, um, honestly, there's not going to be too much of a difference. 
So if they're coming out all the same for you, that's actually pretty standard, um, especially since we try to flatten it out as much as possible. But just to see if there is any differences, we are gonna go ahead and just um, revisit them. So I'm gonna do the across back, which again is mid arm hold to mid arm hold just on the back. And before on the front, I got, so basically our cross chest on the back, I got um, 12 and 3 quarters, and yeah, that's 12 and 3 quarters, so I can put that same measurement in there. And again, this is really just highlighting the difference in how knits are constructed, uh, our knit garments are constructed as opposed to woven. But they really rely on our body to stretch them out for uh, the uh, garment. Now we have our back, the center back length. Oops, sorry, I kicked the camera. And uh, center back length. Should again, it be, should be a little bit more. It actually looks like maybe there's a little bit more of a back neck drop than a front neck drop, which is actually a little strange, but could be just this is kind of a little bit of an old sweater. So our, then I'm going to take that center front neck point and measure it down. And yeah, it looks like my center back uh, leg is about 16 and a half, where my front was 17 and a half. So it's a full inch difference. So now I'm going to take my back neck drop. So I'm going to flatten this out, create a horizontal guideline from where my center back neck is, sort of coming out here, and I'm going to measure down um, from my high point shoulder, and it should be about one and a half inches, because of my full back neck, and it is, it looks like it's a little bit more, but just for consistency, I'm going to say about one and a half inches is my back neck drop. Again, you usually see a bigger front neck drop than a back neck drop. But I accidentally did it on the wrong. Oh no, this, this is my back. I feel the tag. Oh, <laughs> actually no, I messed it up. Wait, let me see where the tag is. This is the front. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why it's... <laughs> oh, I thought that was a little odd that your, uh, my back neck and front neck were uh, the difference. So I'm actually just going to switch those front neck, back neck drop measurements uh, around. But uh, yes, typically you will see that your front neck drop is larger than your back neck drop, even with a crew neck. Um, uh, so keep a lookout if your back neck drop is uh, ending up being bigger than your front neck drop. Um, you probably did, but I didn't accidentally measure the wrong size. <laughs> um, but now that we have those in there, those neck drops, I'm just going to take another look. And it looks like we have all of our measurements uh, planned out. And the last thing I'm just going to do is in the comment section, I'm going to mention that the um, it's finished with what looks like, if we bring it up here, if it's zooming in, you see the rib. Now if you look very closely, I can see that the rib is a, how many stitches do we have in there? It looks like it's a, is it two or three? It gets a little hard to tell with the brushing, but it looks like it's a three by three? A three by three rib. So I'm counting the knit stitches in one of the ribs and then flipping it and seeing the knit stitches here, which is causing the um, sort of hollow part in the middle here. So it's a three by three rib. So um, on the, in the comments, I'm gonna say that um, the cuffs and sweep are finished with a knit in three by three rib. So I'm saying it's knit in because again, the, this part is not stitched in, it's actually knit, and then we just use that part of the fabric that had that knit, so there's no seam here. It just changes knit pattern. But the neck does have a seam. There is a seam here on the uh, neckline. 
So go for the super finish with a three by three inch rib. Um, length indicated in measurements. And the collar is stitched. with a three by three rib. And that's it. That is my completed uh, spec sheet. All I gotta do is add pictures of my garment, um, which I can do via flat or just by uh, taking pictures of this and uploading it into the um, uh, image field section in your spec sheet. So hopefully that was uh, helpful and hopefully you'll have no problems packing your own simple garments. Um, and next, well, no, I was gonna say next week, but we have spring break, so enjoy your spring break. And when we come back, we'll look at how to spec um, some more complex garments. Um, but be healthy, be safe, and I'll leave you with my cat. Oh, she's a Oh, she's a Yeah, I know.